Welcome to a new video from Excel Analysis Series PQB or Power Query Basics. This video PQB 14, we are going to see how we can use Excel.current workbook in order to extract data. And also we're going to see how we can use group by to summarize data inside Power Query. In the practical example, we'll have three tables containing sales data for the first three weeks from January. And what is required in this example is First is to collect data in one table using Power Query. This is similar to the append that we did in video PQB08. However, we're going to use different technique this time using the excel.current workbook function in order to bring all data from different tables inside one table. Second, we are going to prepare the data that is required only for the report. At the end of the video, we'll see that we're going to build a report and we're going to select the data that is required for this report only and the exclude and will exclude the unwanted data and then we are going to see something called auto detect data type in, in instead of having the data type um, amended manually uh, for each column we are going to select the entire table and ask excel to help us to detect the correct data type for each column and then we are going to look at group by, by which is a very important tool or and very important um, skill that you need to be aware of it will help you to summarize data uh, like what you are doing using the sum if in excel or the normal pivot table also helping you to do something similar to group by however inside power query we use group by and it is very helpful especially when you are dealing with a very large uh, set of data then we are going to prepare a dashboard to present our daily sales and we will use a slicer and two charts a very simple and small dashboard will be interactive using the slicer and will present the data inside two charts one for the quantity and one for the net sales and finally you are going to update the dashboard automatically when we receive the data for week four and uh, week five just we're going to do a ref one refresh and the data will be updated automatically if you want to follow along while watching the video or even if you want to practice after watching the video please go down in the description section you will find the link please use it to download the excel file and also use the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified with the new videos as we mentioned here is the data that we're going to use in our example today we'll have three weeks of sales data you can see each week in a single table as you can see uh, Jan 17 week 1, Jan 17 week 2 and Jan 17 week 3 and we want to blend all these together and prepare a very simple daily trend uh, chart using this data before going further into this example I want to show you the end result and how we want to present our data at the end uh, of this work here you can see the end result that we want to reach at the end of our example you can see here this is the this is the summarized table you will see here it's only 124 rows however if you look at the data at the beginning it was like uh, 1000 rows for each week so we're going to summarize the data and also we had a lot of columns we'll select only the columns that is wanted and we're going to prepare these two charts one for the quantity the daily quantity sold and also the net sales value and we have here a slicer if you select any category here you will see that the charts are changing according to the my selection and by end of the video also we're going to see you can see here i have the five five weeks not only three and we'll see when we add the week four and week five in our original file it will update the charts and the table automatically back to our start file as you can see here i have the three weeks each one in a single table and i already uh, transformed the data into a table format so i can directly uh, send this to power query uh, to do this i'm going to go to the data ribbon from the menus and on the left hand side i have the power query and if you remember in previous videos we usually use this icon which is uh, from table or range in order to send the data into power query editor and i'm going to use this icon this time as well just to show you uh, how this works so i'm going to select this icon it will trigger the power query editor inside power query editor you see a preview of your table here but if you focus on the right hand side here in the properties and applied steps i have only two steps first one is the source and then change type which is done automatically by excel let me x out the change type step and i will have only the source 
step I'm going to select it and let's go back and look into the formula bar you can see here here is the formula bar for power query exactly like what we have in Excel it starts with equal and then our function excel.current workbook open and close uh, brackets and then you can see here the name of the table Jan 117 week 1 that was the table that I started uh, selecting it at the beginning and then another parameter called uh, content between two square brackets as you can see what I want to do here is to delete the parameters after the excel.current workbook function so let me select from here and then backspace and enter you will see that I'll have a list of uh, three tables you can see the first column the content table and here is the name of this table if I select the empty space here um, beside the table uh, the table written here for Jan 17 uh, week 1 you will see a preview of your data down here as you can see if I did the same in the second table I'll see the data for second table and so on and so forth and that's how I can get the data uh, using the excel.current workbook but suppose that you don't want to use the icon and then delete and do all of this you want to start uh, from the beginning so let me close this window close the power query editor and I'm going to select this card because I'm not going to save anything for this back to the excel the normal excel window I'll go again to data ribbon and from data ribbon uh, on the left hand side again get and transform data directly to get data and then from other sources and I'm going to select blank query it will open again the power query editor but this time it will open a blank query and the default name will be as you can see on the right hand side query one let me change this to something that we can remember so let let's call it daily sales and enter now I have my query named a daily sales and then I have one step in the applied steps called source but nothing here to show because it's it's still blank and you have the formula bar empty here so I'm going to start like the normal Excel with the normal function I'm going to start with equal and then space and because uh, power query is case sensitive so I need to make sure that I write it in the right case meaning that if you're going to write excel.workbook Excel should start with a capital letter and as I'm typing you can see that power query is helping you you can just select from here and double click but in some other version the hel this helper is not working so you have to write it um, uh, completely uh, yourself so I'm going to write dot and then current will start again with capital letter and then workbook again starts with capital letter and then open and close parentheses and enter you will see that the three tables are coming again your way as we did last time using the uh, icon or the shortcut for uh, data from uh, table or range so um, what I want to do now is to expand this data because I need the content that I have here I need to expand this data and usually I use this icon to do the expansion however I need to decide what to do with the names uh, actually for the report purpose I don't need this tab this column I will not use this name for any for anything so I can just delete it but there is something very useful uh, using this column let's together uh, start to anticipate what will happen after we uh, load this uh, uh, query into excel it will create a new table called uh, daily sales which is the name of the query itself so uh, when you refresh this query again if you add more data and you want to refresh this query again a new table will add it here called daily sales and for sure because it's the output table it will go again into the input uh, data so it will cause some problems so I need to make sure that Excel will exclude any table called daily sales when it refresh the query uh, again so let me go to the properties and I'm going to select the name here daily sales Control C to copy and then I'm going to select the header of the column the arrow in the header of the column and I'm going to filter it out so I'm going to select text filter then does not equal it will open uh, the dialog box for uh, the text filter in front of does not equal I'm going to control V in order to uh, paste and then OK notice that nothing happened here because there is no table called daily sales now however in the future when we do uh, another refresh it will appear here so this um, recorded step as you can see here it will prevent having any troubles when you refresh this data and having the output table daily sales now no need uh, anymore for this column I can just select from the header and click on remove columns now uh, let's expand our data we are ready we can just click on this uh, arrows the double arrows that you have on the top of this column the content column 
just click on it it will open this dialog box and ask you what exactly you want to expand um, I don't need all this data you can see that there's a lot of columns I need just four columns so I'm going to uncheck select all columns let me select the date and then the category this is the way I'm going to classify my data and my report and then I need the quantity the, uh, the sold quantity and the net sales and don't forget to uncheck use original column name as prefix then click on OK your data will be expanded as you can see here I have my four columns and all the data for the four uh, for the three tables are uh, appended together in one uh, query or one table you will see here all the steps are recorded the source the filter that we did and then the column for the name of the table and finally uh, the expanded uh, content of the three tables now I want to adjust or uh, make sure that I have the correct data type for these four columns if you look at the headers here you will see the icon for ABC 1 2 3 for the four columns meaning that Excel didn't decide yet what is the correct data type for each one of them and usually we did this manually in the previous videos we select uh, each and every column and did the data type just from here but for this time I want to show you something different I can select the four columns together I'm going to select the first one and press on shift and then click on the header of the last one so that now I have the four columns selected if you go to transform you will see an icon called detect data type and this will help you to find the correct data type for each column automatically just click on it and you will see that the data type changed first one one to two for net sales meaning that it is decimal number which is good for sales one to three whole number good for quantity and ABC which is text good for the category last one is date but it is date with time you can see the icon here uh, a calendar and a clock meaning it is date and time and you can see the the uh, time is uh, written after the date here I want this to be only date I can just do it manual I'm going to select and select date from here it will ask you if you want to replace the current step or add new one for me I want to replace no need to add uh, extra step now I have my data types are good I am good to load this uh, table so I'm going to home close and load close and load to it will close the power query editor and a small dialog box will be, will be popped up called import data as you can see here I have four options to load I'm going to select the first one which is table and the new worksheet is good for me let me click on OK it will create a new worksheet called sheet one as you can see here and the queries and connection pane will be opened and your query will be loaded it is 4,000 rows for the data coming from the three tables let me give a good name for the sheet one I'm going to uh, borrow the name from the table uh, double click here in the table name control C to copy and then go down in the sheet one double click and control V and enter I have now proper name for the daily sales I think the last thing that we want to do here is doing the grouping we need to do the grouping for this data but before doing this directly I want to try to help you to understand what is the concept of doing a group by in power query so let's have a look on the following example if you look at this small table in this PowerPoint you'll see that I have only four rows in the four rows I have the same date however in the category column you have two categories accessories and bikes what I want to do I want to summarize this table into this small table meaning that I have only uh, one line for each category with, with its correspondent date so for January 1st four accessories I have only four quantities which is the submission of these two rows 2 plus 2 and the net sales of 33.3 which is the submission of 15.5 and 17.8 same for bikes I have two records for bikes I want to summarize them in one line quantity is 6 which is the submission of these two uh, um, records and also the same for the value which is 996.1 which is submission of these two numbers this is exactly what we want to do using group by as I mentioned it is similar to sum if and also I can do the same using a pivot table however some in some cases you will have a, a lot of data 10 million records or maybe more than 10 million records that can be handled with power query and you cannot do do it using the uh, pivot table it's it will be much easier if you take out the details that you don't want for your report using the power query and summarize your data using group by
now let's see how we can do the group by in, in our example. So I'm going to uh, the quiz and connection pane. I have my query daily sales here. I'm going to double click. It will open again the Power Query Editor. Inside Power Query Editor, I can see the group by uh, tool in two menus. One uh, first one in the home menu. You can see it here in the middle, the group by, and also in the transform, we'll find it at the most uh, left uh, section in the in the transform ribbon as you can see on the left hand side let me try to click on it and see what will happen when you click on the group by it will open a small dialog box which is the group by dialog box for sure you will see that you have two options basic group by or advanced group by if you have the basic group by meaning that you will have only uh, one option for grouping and also one column for aggregation so you can only have two columns if you use the basic option in the group by you will have only two options one will be the categorization or it can be the date or anything else you can select any column here and also you can do a calculation in only one column so the end result will be only two columns which is can be if you want but in our cases we need to have the four columns as is however it will be summarized so i can i'm going to advanced from advanced you can add more grouping and also you can add more aggregation so you can group using more than one column and also you can do aggregation for more than one column let me press on escape and let me show you something different if i select the date column and then press on control and select category column so i selected the two together when i click on group by it will select both together as you can see so you, you are going to group by two columns date and category because i select both before clicking on group by and then you can add your aggregation here so my first aggregation will be as you can see the quantity so i'm going to replace this uh, column with a new aggregated column and I'm going to give it the same name so first I need to give a name for the new uh, column I will give it the same name quantity and then I need to decide the operation you'll see here the options you can you have the sum average median min max and some other uh, options for me I'm going to use sum and the, the, the column that I want to do summation for will be the quantity column I'm going to select also from this drop down I'm going to add another aggregation will be for the net sales so I'm going to keep the same name for the new column it will be also net sales and then the operation will be again sum column I'm going to select will be the net sales this time then I'm going to click on OK you will see that I will have only 84 rows as you can see instead of the four thousand rows i had in the previous time without the aggregation and you'll see that a new step added to my applied steps called grouped rows we can just close uh, the power query editor from the red x here and don't forget to keep you have to select keep not discard this time i'm going to select keep so it will save the changes that you did into this query you will see also the in the queries and connection pane the daily sales query will be reloaded only 84 rows and you will have the new table summarized as you can see here only 84 rows now we are ready we can start to do uh, our report as i showed you in the previous example or the complete example i'm going to draw a trend line by category for both quantity and sales so i'm going to select the date Control shift and arrow down to select the entire row and then press on control and with the mouse I'm going to select the quantity uh, column the entire column for quantity uh, I'm not I'm, go I'm not going to select the header only the data and from insert I'm going to select the lines and let's have this line you will see that uh, the chart is meaningless uh, you can see this it, it's it's uh, it's a mess why because I have recurrence for the dates I have four times for first of January but each time I have different category so in order to have something meaningful here I need to do a filtration on category so I'm going to select only bikes then you'll see that the chart is meaningful but look if I try to do this selection like this like bikes you will see that the chart will disappear so I need to do something before doing this filtration Control Z to undo first let me also close this to have some more space right click on the chart area format chart area you need to go to this uh, square at the at the most right and then from from properties you're going to select don't move or size with cells now if you are going to select category and filter the table on uh, on the bikes so you'll, you'll see that you have a good trend let me try something different something like accessories i think it will be also another good 
uh, trend or another good chart. This chart is for, uh, as we mentioned, is for quantity. So I'm going to double click on the chart title and write quantity. Let's try to complete the dashboard. I want to do my filtration in a good way. I not, don't want to go every time to the, f the header of the column and do the filtration. So I need to do it visually. As you know, I can do this using a slicer. While selecting any cell inside the table, I'm going to table design. And from table design, insert a slicer. It will ask you in which column exactly you want to insert the slicer. For sure, I need it for category. And click on OK. It will create this small slicer as you can see i can put it on the right here and if you do the filtration using the slicer it will work perfectly with this uh, chart now let's do some uh, formatting usually i don't like the grid lines i'm going to select and delete i'm going to select the line itself and if you go down in the format data series you'll see something called smooth line i'm going to select you will see that the edges disappeared it's uh, visually um, I think it's better uh, also if you go to if you select the line again you can change the color let me give something like uh, a gray for the color this is not bad and also the slicer itself I need to change the colors to be something that is suitable for the gray here so I'm going to select the slicer from the header I can go to slicer menu I can select from slicer styles I'm going to select the gray one I think it's good now I can also make the slicer a little bit uh, smaller so uh, let me show you something uh, very nice. If you uh, press on Alt uh, and then you select the slicer itself, you can just move it to have it aligned with the grid. You can see here, when I move with Alt, I can just put it in the corners with the grids. So now I have it here, I think it's good. I can also do the same while resizing. So I'm going to press on Alt and then I'm going to use this dot to resize and you'll see it will be aligned with the grid. Same if I want to increase the height, I can just put it aligned with the grid like this. And also I can do some other changes for the buttons. I can go to slicer menu again while selecting the slicer itself. You will see here in the button section, I can change the height. So I'm going to increase the height like this. And I don't need the headers for the slicer because category, it's category. So no need to show something called category. So let me right click and select slicer settings and you will see something called display header uncheck and okay you will see that you have only the buttons now i can take the chart to be aligned with the slicer i'll do the same pressing on alt and drag also let me resize to the left also let me uh, decrease the height it's too high so let me do it like this i think it's very good now i think we are almost ready we can copy this and do another one for the net sales select the chart area Control c to copy and go below and Control v to paste i have identical chart here i can just move the selection area with my mouse here to just point to the net sales i think it's okay i can just change the title double click and call it net sales value and we can change the color of the line i'm going to choose the dark red and here you go you can just go to view ribbon and uncheck the grid lines and you see here we go here is the dashboard that i showed you in the example you can just select and the two charts will change according to your selection now i want to add more data so let's see how we can add more data to this. I have already my data ready in another file. I have two, uh, another two tables for week four and week five. Let's go and bring them. Here we go. We have the two weeks in a separate file, uh, Jan 17 week four and Jan 17 week five. I want to send these two tabs inside the original file, the file that we are working on. So let me select the uh, week four, right click, move or copy. I'll take a copy and then go to pqb14 start file move to end and okay you will see the new tab coming here let me do the same for week five i have all the files here let me go to the daily sales report i want to refresh my query i can just do it from the table or i can just do it here from the query menu you will find uh, something called refresh but let's do it right click and refresh you will see that I have data up to 31st of January for both charts. And if you check, you'll see that more lines added up to uh, 124, as we mentioned 
before now you have all the data updated i want to reopen the query again and uh, show you something so let's edit you can use uh, while selecting the table from the query menu you can just press on edit it will trigger again the power query editor let's go back to the source step at the very beginning let me refresh preview what you will see here you have six tables the five weeks that we have table uh, week one up to uh, week five but you have also the daily sales table as we mentioned at the beginning but because we did this the second uh, step which is uh, filter draws if you select the second step and you check you will see that the daily sales appeared and the rest of steps is applied correctly and you have no issue that's why we did the filtration at the beginning of the video i think it's very important and very easy you can add a lot of years here if you add the entire year of or maybe five six years no problem you will have your trend updated with only one refresh that was all for this video thank you very much for your time but before leaving you if you didn't subscribe yet please do like the video if you like it and leave me a comment and see you in the next video and bye